Okay, so now that we have um, the images stuck together in one file, we and we have it rotated and we have it shrunk down to approximately the right size, what we're going to do, we could use selection tools over here. You could use the magic wand tool, which would drive you insane, or you could use the lasso tool or any of those kind of uh, selection tools. But I like flexibility when I work, and I think it's oftentimes the best way to go. So what we're going to do is actually just add a mask to layer one, which I'm going to now change to be called um, kid, just so I know which one it is. While I'm here too, I'm going to go ahead and change the name of the background layer. And all I did to do that was just double click on where it says background. And I'm going to come in here, I'm going to call it dog. And that will also make it into an editable layer, um, meaning that I can move my layer order around, which at this point doesn't do me any good. But um, probably in the final tutorial in this series, uh, you'll see why that might be kind of fun to do. So make sure you're back on the layer with the kid. Add a layer mask. And layer masks are interesting because if you paint on a layer mask, which is this little white icon you get over here, if you paint in black, it will cover up what is on this layer that the mask is on. Or if you have it white, it will show through. Um, what is on that layer, and everything will be visible. Hence, when it comes up by default, it's all white. And anything that is gray is going to give you a gradient of transparency, depending on how dark or light your gray is. If your gray is almost white, then it'll be almost 100% um, the image of this. If your gray is really dark, then it's going to be almost 100% the image of the dog showing through. So come over here. And I'm going to start painting out the parts of the little boy that I don't want. So I want to have black as my foreground color. So you can switch the uh, arrow until black is the one on top. Then choose your brush. And I want to use, obviously, it would take me a million years with a brush of this size. It's only 10 pixels. So if you use your left or right bracket keys, the right bracket key will make your brush bigger. And then go ahead and just start painting in black. And it's always good to make sure that you have a soft brush when you're doing this. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to start painting out the areas of the little boy that I don't want. And right there I'm starting to get kind of a funny looking picture. But I'm working on a postage stamp, which is very difficult. I can't see what I'm doing, so I'm going to do Control-0, which will make the image be as large as it can be on the screen. And that helps me to be able to see what I'm doing just a little bit better. So now I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. And continue painting out. And I have my opacity right now set to 100%. If I want a subtler um, effect, I can come up here and I can change my opacity down to, well, let's try 32%. And you'll see how it's, it's going to be gray, actually, which you're getting some of that transparency. Over here, you can just barely see a little bit of the gray on there. But it allows for a little bit better blending, so it's not quite so harsh and severe. Okay, and if I want to see how I'm doing on lining up, because what I really want to do is try and line up this little boy's eyes with the dog's eyes, I can take the opacity of that layer down, and then I can use my Move tool over here, and see, make sure where it says Auto Select Layer, make sure that is not selected in this situation, because you could see I was moving the dog and I didn't want to. I want to move the little boy. And there I'm going to line up the eyes. And this is a place too, if you didn't get the rotation correct in the first go around, you can go do, do Control T and come out here and you can play around with your alignment with no problem. You could also play with scale at this point. And then hit Enter when you get it the way you want it. 
and then pop that opacity back up to 100% and you can continue painting. In the next tutorial I'm going to spend time actually I will cut the nose out separate and the mouth out separate so that we have these three elements on their own layers.